Hey folks, Matt from ArtoftheImage.com. A lot of people have been asking for my review on the Sigma 8 to 16 millimeter, the wide angle zoom um, for APS-C cameras, DX cameras. And um, so I've had it for a little bit now. You've probably seen the unboxing video I have up here on the Art of the Image channel. And so I thought I'd give you some insight, my, my kind of review to this point of uh, what I think of it. Uh, to start off with, the Sigma 8 to 16 millimeter is very nicely constructed lens, very well built, feels very solid. Everything moves uh, smoothly. The, uh, the focusing ring uh, is very smooth. The zoom ring is very smooth. All the switches function nice and smoothly. Everything's well built, well constructed. So I would give it top marks on construction. Very nice piece of lens as far as uh, a nice piece of kit and well built. Um, as far as build quality, top marks. The um, One of the nice things too is the size and weight. It's a very relatively small lens for a lens that goes from eight to 16 millimeters. Basically, once you take the lens cap off and take the uh, protective cover, or the it's almost like a hood, but it's a, a ring that protects the, uh, the front um, bulb, the, uh, the element is bulbous. So you could, um, you take that off and you're down to an even smaller size now. And so very, very small. I mean, there's my hand. I don't have large hands anyways, but there's my hand in comparison and quite a, a small, lightweight lens, which for me these days, small and lightweight is always optimum. I don't like it at the expense of performance, which as we'll get into, you're not, you're not having to deal with that on this lens. It's very good. It doesn't come at the expense of performance. But small and weight is ex uh, small and light is excellent in terms of, of size and weight. So uh, in that regards, really nice lens. This lens is made in Japan, so probably accounts for its excellent quality. It's not an EX lens uh, by designation, but I would I would almost think this lens should be in the EX lens in the sense that it's built just like my EX lenses in the top end line of the Sigma. It's very well built, very well constructed. There's the uh, the rear elements. The front element, I don't know if you can see there, we'll do some close-ups at the beginning of this, how um, it is quite a bulbous front end. So that is the one negative of this lens in the sense of, for those of you that would like to use filters, you're going to have to do some fiddling and, and probably get um, an attachment to do it. You should use your filters because with anything with a bulbous lens like that, you're not going to get a filter that screws directly on. Um, and this uh, uh, hood-like look -like looking attachment that actually protects the lens is threaded. So you could put filters on that, but the problem you're gonna run into with this, and I've seen is when you go ultra wide, this is starting to uh, vignette and starting to show up in the photo. So, so far I've been very impressed with the Sigma 8 to 16 millimeter from what I've seen. Uh, it works very well. I've mostly shot it on my D7000 and I've shot it some on my Nikon D90 as well. Um, it's quick to focus, it has accurate focus. Uh, as I mentioned, the size and weight are great. It's been a joy to work with on the 7000 and on the 90. I'm very happy with the image quality so far. It's very sharp uh, and looks very good. The 8 millimeter is really nice in terms of how wide you can go on this. Obviously, this is about the widest zoom you can get right now. We have the Canon 10 to 22 millimeter available. Both versions of the Sigma 10 to 20 millimeter, the f3.5 EX version and the variable aperture 4.5 to 5.6 version. We also have the Tamron 10 to 24 millimeter, which is variable aperture as well. And of course the Tokina 11 to 16 millimeter, which is a constant 2.8 aperture. So of all the options, the Sigma 8 to 16 is the widest lens, which when you're trying to go for a wide lens, it, it, you know, that's what counts. And so that um, ranks heavily in my choice to use the 8 to 16 because of that extra two millimeters really makes a difference, a lot more difference than you might realize at the wide end. So overall, shooting experience has been very good. I'm very happy with the lens. Performance has been good. The size and weight, very nice. And um, the price is bang on. It's right in there. It's not a lot cheaper than the other lenses, but its performance is probably, it, I, I would think that this, the 8-16 to is probably the best performing lens in this range right now. So again, kudos to Sigma for a really well-made, really good performing lens. So now we've had just a little discussion on the lens and what, we what I think of it. 
Let's have a look at some photos I've done with it. I'll show you some examples of shots I've taken with it. And you can see firsthand what you think of some of the images I've shot with it. Let's head over to the computer. Okay, so we're back at the computer. We're in Lightroom and I've got some sample photos here to show you that I shot with the Sigma 8 to 16 millimeter. And so here we have a, uh, a photo of our library here in Woodstock. It's shot at nine millimeters. Uh, setting on the lens and um, basically exposed for the building so we've lost a bit of our sky. The detail on this looks very nice and sharp. I can read the close sign right here. Woodstock Public Library. Detail in the windows looks good. If we come right over to the edges, here's basically the far corner here. So what we'll do is we'll come up just a little bit to the detail. I can read this sign in the distance, MMC. You can read by permit only the wheelchair parking sign. The trees look good. So the detail is, uh, it looks good in the corners. Up here you can see public library in the top here. Let's go up to the, uh, to the other side here. And again, we'll go out to the edges and see. And the detail still looking pretty good in the corners. I don't see any mushing of detail or anything like that. So it's looking pretty good that way. No problems there. And... Um, so we'll zoom out of that. We'll move over to another one here. And here we have more of a close-up. I've gotten up closer with the lens uh, right in front of the building, basically on the sidewalk. It's at 8 millimeters again. Um, I've exposed more for my sky here. So this is really easy to uh, to just bring up the exposure. We'll use the, uh, the fill light here just so you can see. Uh, and we'll crank up on brightness a little bit here. And again, um, we're going to want to... Uh, Let's come in a little bit here. Let's go. Uh, let's go one to one, and uh, have a look in the corners here. And you can see, look at that. The detail is still nice and sharp. You can see the detail in here. We can read the detail on that sign, the no parking sign. This uh, this building um, banner on the other side at the art gallery is very clear, and that's up near the corner. And if we go to the detail in the center, still very very clear, nice and sharp and we come into the far corners we still have good detail retention very good this is something you want to look for in a lens a lot of times is the edge to edge sharpness and and this lens is the sigma 18 to or 8 to 16 is showing very good edge to edge sharpness here i'm quite pleased with that and uh, as you can see it looks it looks quite decent so that is the uh, the woodstock public library up close move over to the next photo this is the old courthouse buildings in Woodstock here and um, what we'll do is we'll zoom right out so you can see the full photo here you can see a little bit of the VIG netting that happens from using an ultra wide like this um, this lens is this uh, setting here on the lens is at eight millimeters again at f45 um, just to show you what you can do in uh, in um, Lightroom here, the lens corrections, you go to the profile and you can just hit enable profile corrections and it automatically will pull up the profile if it has it as you can see it did here. So here's the uh, the profile on and then there it is off. So it basically corrects any problems, uh, vignetting or distortion with the lens. Not that there's a lot of distortion if you look, you don't see a lot of distortion correction. What you're basically seeing here is just vignetting. So that's very good on the lens as well. So just something to bear in mind there too. It's one of the powers of Lightroom is that some things are correctable on a lens such as vignetting are really not an issue anymore when you can uh, digitally fix them so easily. So let's zoom in a little bit here and see the detail on this shot very sharp as you can see looks really good there we go out to the sides um, you can see Oxford County Courthouse on the sign the grass the blades of grass here look very uh, detailed uh, no problems there we zoom up here you can see good edge to edge sharpness uh, the, uh, the lens is performing very well let's pull it over to the other side again looks quite good no no problems here to speak of at all so uh, very pleased with it and this is uh, one to one pixel peeping here folks I mean if we go in like one to two um, things look even better and basically my theory is if things look good at one to two that's uh, as as pixel peeping as you're ever gonna get in a print most people are never looking at one to one anyways but this lens is holding up well at one to one here's another shot of the courthouse up even closer we've stepped closer to the lawn you could see it there 
and uh, basically we have um, again the exposure we've I've, I've covered more for my sky there so I'll just use a little fill just to see show you what this picture might kind of quickly look like and uh, you can see there again very good very good um, detail is being resolved nice and sharp let's go into the corners here again and you can see that it looks really really good no problems whatsoever so continuing on you can see that this lens is uh, is performing very nicely no problems no questions uh, on, on the quality there